It smells so good, that fried fragrance. Okay, let's go. I'm super excited. Moment of truth, guys. Is this the most perfect chip in the world? We are at Buckingham Palace, one of the few remaining working royal palaces in the world. It has served as the official London residence of the UK sovereign since 1837 and is also the monarch's administrative headquarters today. If I'm not mistaken, the Buckingham Palace is only open to the public on selected periods of the year and even then you need to pay an admission fee. I believe it's 10 weeks in the summer and certain times during the spring and the winter. However, you could watch the changing of guards for free every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Weather permitting and it's actually happening right now. <laughs> And we are at Buckingham Palace today because I think this is the appropriate start for this vlog as we are trying some traditional British cuisine or more specifically medieval British cuisine. And we are going to this restaurant called Dinner by Heston Blumenthal. First, a quick introduction to who Chef Heston is. He's a world-renowned chef who is the proprietor of the Fat Duck in Bray, a restaurant that has three Michelin stars. Now, the most important significance is I think in year 2003, they were ranked number one in the world 50 best restaurants list, which means they are insanely good, one of the best restaurants in the world. And Dinner is another restaurant run by Chef Heston, and the idea for Dinner came about due to Chef Heston's fascination with the historic gastronomy of Britain. And with that, he delved into old cookbooks as old as the 14th century, such as the form of curry. And with the help of food historians, the team at Dinner created the medieval meals for the modern palate. Dinner currently hosts two Michelin stars and is helmed by chef John Bowring, who joined in year 2003 as a commie chef and over the years ascended in the rankings to finally become head chef of this esteemed establishment. Guys, we are given a really nice table with natural lighting. We are seated at the side overlooking Hyde Park. And this is my view. Look at those beautiful trees. And I would say the setting of the restaurant is contemporary, it's modern, but it is also very elegant at the same time. And I gotta say, you could watch the kitchen working. That's a spectacle with just a thin piece of ceiling high glass separating us and the kitchen crew. And on one side of the glass, you can see these pineapples, they are on these skewers and they're speed roasting under the fire very slowly. That is for a certain dish we'll be having later. Anyway, we have our waiter serving us today called Alessandro, I believe. And to start the meal off, you've got three choices of how you want your meal to go. You've got these cards. They are very interesting looking cards. And you've got three choices here. The guide is where the waiter will explain every single dish to you in detail. You've got the adventurer, where they just leave the dish and they walk away. Let the food do the talking. And then you've got the maverick, which means you can ask them to explain certain dishes that interest you. So of course, um, since we are filming, we will get the guide. So you guys will be able to understand all the ingredients in the dishes together with us. All right guys, the starter is here and this is one of dinner's signatures, the meat fruit. Over here, you have got the mandarin orange. Look at how beautiful it is with leaves and everything, but it is actually not mandarin. It is a chicken liver parfait. And on the side, we've got bread. The way they explain to me is that the bread is sort of like a ciabatta, but it's not a ciabatta. And they have brushed olive oil and then perfumed it with garlic, thyme, and rosemary. <laughs> okay, let's hope I don't screw this up. Oh, it's really soft. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's soft as butter, like melted butter. Goodness me. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm gonna smear it across the bread. Oh, it smells beautifully. Okay, off we go, off we go. Mm. <laughs> the 
flavor of liver, you know, the umami of liver. But it's not overly strong. And you could taste hints of mandarin from the mandarin gel, which is the surface, the orange surface. Mm, it's so smooth, it's so delicate. It tastes like a fagua pate, but instead of fagua, it's chicken. It's not as like umami as the fagua, but it's got a very nice delicate flavor. And I really like this. It's so smooth, this buffet. And the mandarin gel, the place harmoniously. The bread is toasty, and it's got really crunchy sides. And the middle is chewy enough. It pairs beautifully with this buffet. I love this. This is great. Mm. Alright guys, dish two, hay smoked trout. And you'll notice over here there are two cute looking pieces of trout obviously smoked with hay. And you've got some vegetables surrounding it. I believe these are some form of lemon gel. And then in the middle is gentleman relish. A mix of like an anchovy sauce together with garlic and some herbs and spices. So let's quickly try out the trout now. is so tender. It's almost like a sashimi where you smoke with hay so you get that intense dry grass smoke flavor. It's great. I'm going to take another bite with the vegetables because I think the vegetables will provide a great textural contrast in terms of crispness and crunchiness. Mm. Mm. Surprisingly refreshing dish. The tang. I think the gel on the sides, they are pickled lemon gel. You could still taste the smokiness and the trout just acts as a vehicle of tenderness. Literally like salmon sashimi. Very good salmon sashimi in a way. I love this dish. Great, great lifting dish from the richer cafe early on. Mm, you definitely taste some mustard. I think what is great about this dish is the acidity. It really gives you the lift and makes you salivate and really washes away all that rich parfait flavor from the earlier dish. That was a great dish. This is a better follow-up that cleanses your palate for the next dish. Awesome. All right, guys, dish number three, we've got a potage of quail. Potage, as I understand, is traditionally a sort of like a porridge dish. And over here, they have done it in a more refined, more modern manner. You've got, obviously, a very nice, I believe it's roasted quail, done on a jasper oven. And we've got some spelt, which is an ancient grain. We've got some vegetables and a smoked broth, which is made from mainly quail as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a bit of the quail, and then I'm going to eat it together with the uh, spelt together with some of that broth and the vegetables. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's a complicated flavor. Quail is very tender, very, very tender with some bite. The spelt has a nice bite. It's sort of like a body in a way. The crunchiness of vegetables, they are crisp. And I think they added some crumbled spice on the foil. So it's got a nice spice flavor. And the broth, oh, it's got this nice, like, sourness. You could definitely tell it's a meat based broth, in this case, a quail. Maybe for Malaysians, you know, it's like the Nunez Pitik Tim. And it's smoked. It's very much like a very well done Pitik Tim. It's great. Mm. I love this. I love this very much. This is really good. Alright 
guys, the main course and we've got codfish beautifully seared on the surface. Nice flaky flesh and we've got on the sides, uh, chicory underneath, nicely caramelized. And up top, these are, I believe they are called chima di rapa with some pickled onions and up top kombu and the green sauce in the middle is a mixture of chili juice and something else I don't quite remember but the key point is not this dish is this Chef Heston's perfected chips called the triple cooked chips they say it's the best chips in the world I'm super excited to try it oh, it smells so good that fried fragrance okay let's go I'm super excited moment of truth guys is this the most perfect chip in the world Perfect crunch on the surface. Mm, that crispness and the oil fragrance that oozes out. And the inside is soft, it's fluffy, it's light. You could taste the potato flavor in them. This is absolutely the best chips that I've ever had. And it beats any fries, even. I think chips and fries are the same, right? This is the best rice, guys. You gotta try this. Goodness, and you could tell the surface for the potato, it's got this porous in them because they cook it three times, they boil it until it's like, the, the surface is sort of like soft and then they cool it off and then they fry it and then they cool it off again and then they fry it again. This is how they maintain that nice crisp crunchiness up top and the inside is soft and fluffy. Mm. Right, we're gonna move on to the cord. We're gonna cut through this beautiful piece of crisp surface, nice flaky fish. Oh, you don't even need to cut it, you just need to apply a little bit of pressure. Put a bit of that sauce on. There we go, there we go. Mm. Mm. The cord is really tender. You will taste a little bit of the cod flavor, but I think the tea lies in the sauce. It's like a vegetable based sauce, a little bit of tang. Oh, it goes very well with that fish. What about the chicory? I feel the vegetable, I outshone the fish. The chicory is bitter, right? So, in order to counter that bitterness, they put brown sugar on top, they caramelize brown sugar on top, so you get that sweetness. Then the pickle, onion, or shallot rather, it's so small. It gives you that tang. So, it's got a nice uh, bitterness, some tang, and then you got that caramelized sugar. Mm, mm. Vegetable is very good, it's juicy, succulent. It's got lots of juices in the chicory. Yeah, definitely I'll show the card there. Leisure. So, in here we have our blackberry tart. We have a sponge at the bottom made with saffron, olive oil and almond. We have as well some Jesse cream and a little puff pastry which is called omelette. This is a set of blackberry sorbet. Oh, it's like a cake underneath. Nice. Okay, let's go. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is very good. Blackberry sorbet is so refreshing. It's got a slight tang, but it's not overly acidic. The puff pastry is sweet. It's got a nuttiness. They glazed it with sugar. It's very crunchy. The thing underneath is a saffron mixed with almond. Spongy and nice. Mm. I'm gonna take another bite. I like this, this is very good. Mm. Amazing dessert. You feel really hard on this dessert. This is very good. Goodness. This is so good, it's so refreshing. But it's not overly acidic. The acidity comes from the blackberries themselves. Really nice, really nice. Guys, final dessert, the tipsy cake. Remember that speed roaster pineapple? It's here in all its glory. Look at that beautiful caramelization. And over here, 
we have got the brioche. Of course, first of all, let's talk about the tradition. Um, the history of Tipsy Cake is generally a sponge cake which is soaked in sherry and brandy. In this case, in dinner, they fancy it up. They use the brioche and inside they use vanilla custard and they put some brandy and I think the other wine is Sultana or something. It's a sweet wine from France. I'm not too sure. So we will try the brioche first. Let's go. Oh, it's warm. The brioche is buttery. The custard flavor. And you could taste the alcohol flavor. The bitterness from the alcohol. Mm. Okay, let's try that pineapple. Oh, they have really sliced it for you. Makes it easier. Oh, look at this. Okay. Mm. It's sweet. Because when you boil it, also, it loses its acidity in the pineapple. I think it pairs ridiculously well with this. Um, sort of like a more alcohol heavy brioche. Because this is quite rich, and then the pineapple cuts it down. This is fantastic. <laughs> Definitely worthy of a signature dessert. Alright, I'm gonna pass this to Quad and let her finish it. And we'll see you in a bit for painting time. That was an indulgent meal. Anyway, I think we're gonna do some museum visit before we head for playing time. Let's go to the Natural History Museum. Hey guys, this is the Natural History Museum and we are going to tour it. What I will do is I will skip all the basic information because you can Google it and I'll share with you our experience touring this place or rather part of it because it is rather massive. The Natural History Museum showcases the history of Earth and life within. As you enter the main hall, you are greeted by a magnificent bone cast of a blue whale. There are bone cast of mammals on the sides, some huge specimen of fish, beautiful insects on display, all sorts of birds, wonderful creatures they are and that is just the main entrance the museum is then divided into colored zones so it's relatively easy to navigate around there's the dinosaur zone where you see lots of bones and fossils of dinosaurs on display explanation on their habitat and behavior as well there's even an animatronic t-rex that looks pretty realistic perhaps the main attraction is tippy a long-necked dinosaur that has just returned to the museum it has its own room and it was really magnificent to marvel at. The mammal zone has specimens of lots of animals, species of different kinds, huge bones of whales. However, the large carnivore section is unfortunately closed for conservation, so we didn't get to see any of the meat eaters. But they did a pop up conservatory in the Darwin Center, a center filled with jars of odd specimens, many of which we haven't seen before and we managed to eventually find the lion as well as the leopard waiting to be given a touch-up. We even saw a staff member working on a dinosaur cast too. And finally, we visited the Earth Zone, which has a really, really cool entrance. It explains the history of Earth, how volcanoes and earthquakes affect the land. There are also minerals, gems, really too much stuff for us to tour in one day. And they have a unique structure that is shaped like a cocoon which tells us stories on how scientists work to discover and learn about Earth. It's an 8 story structure with some really good stuff. So basically what I'm saying is definitely have to come here to tour the Natural History Museum because it is free. Yeah, it doesn't cost you a dime. But the thing is, I would suggest that you go to their website and you order your ticket online because on weekends the crowds can get crazy and you might be denied access. So there you go, a very quick tour of the Natural History Museum. We are glad we came. Now, let's head to somewhere quieter and do our plating time. <sighs> All right, <laughs> that was a great, great meal. Uh, we are now seated at Hyde Park. I think it's, uh, is it the largest park in London? Okay, I'm not too sure, but it's definitely really large. <laughs> and let's talk about dinner. 
like uh, right over there actually Dina's right over there I think ultimately a really really enjoyable experience very high quality meal dishes were all executed perfectly flavors were generally well balanced with great depth the meat food was definitely a standout uncannily realistic looking mandarin orange perfectly smooth liver parfait on a fragrant toast <sighs> it's really really good Hey smoked salmon cleanse the richness of the parfait with a great tang and slight heat from the gentleman relish and mm. lemon gel. Yep. And then that is followed by a perfectly tender quail. Love the potage. The broth really reminds me of the tech team. It's really heartwarming for me. Ah. I think for us, probably the weakest link lies in the main course, right? The cod. I think the side salad actually outshone the main produce. Mm. But don't get us wrong, the cod is well prepared. Yeah, it's actually executed perfectly. Flaky and extremely succulent with a beautiful caramelized surface. The issue probably laid with the cod itself is mm. sweet, mm. but for a dish done this mm. perfect, I was hoping the cod would have been even sweeter yeah. to get on par with the rest of the ingredients on the plate. It's still an amazing dish though. I'm basically looking at it from a perfect dish perspective. Dessert will bang on. Love the blackberry tart with its multitude of texture mm. and flavour depth. The tipsy cake was amazing as well with its combination of sweet roasted pineapple to counter the alcohol moist custody brioche. We love the tipsy cake. Yeah, we do. We love the tipsy cake very much. Mm. Okay, uh, at this point, I think I want to mention about the flow. I think the flow is done very well as well. Very smart. They started with something that is richer in the parfait and then they follow up with a cleanser in the form of the salmon. And then you get a heartwarming dish, mm. right? The potage, and then your main course. Uh, oh yes, I forgot. I need to talk about the triple cooked chips. Definitely the best chips that we have had. Really amazing. I think it pairs pretty well with the cod. Let me put it this way. It's not something that's going to blow your mind. But I don't think you'll be able to find any chips that's better than it. Because it's literally ultra crispy on the outside. And the inside is soft and it's very fluffy and airy. Yeah. Right. Okay, where was I? Back to the flow, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the main course, and then they follow up with very beautifully done desserts. I think um, that is a really great flow, mm -hmm. which you normally you. It's arguable. Sometimes you don't find it in one or two star restaurants. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. This has amazing flow. I think this is one of the easiest plating time for us because everything was impeccable. Yeah. It was very straightforward, very good, and very simple to great in a way. Yeah. And with that being said. Dinner by Heston Blumenthal scores a two plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some sophisticated culinary inducing multiple mouth gasms. I would say absolutely a must try if you're in London. Yeah. If you are interested in knowing what medieval mm. British cuisine tastes like in a modern form, yeah, try dinner out. A huge thank you to the team at dinner for allowing us to film and for being so accommodative. The service was great, it was very attentive, very nice people. <laughs> Hope you have enjoyed this food vlog. Uh, if you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you had to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell button. Till we eat again next week in London. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. The material that they use in the laboratories is the same thing that this stuff is made of. So this is Korean um, material. So it's really, really good, uh, versatile for using things at very high temperatures and very very low temperatures and today we're going to use it to make some ice cream yep. <laughs> so what we're going to do first we're going to pop the custard into the jug see how high we can get it today Ooh. have you ever seen or heard about liquid nitrogen before we have heard about it you've heard about it you've never seen it <laughs> no it's what's in this jar so <laughs> ready for it it's going to get a little bit dusty a little bit smoky here we're going to pop this in here just a little bit first mix it up a little Amazing. The temperature is great. That's it, yeah. It's a Don't worry, it's a little bit cold on this side as well. So. Let's have a look and see how we're looking now. Do you feel we need more? Yeah, almost there. Almost there. Not far off. Keep whipping and keep pouring. That's more of a spread of soft serve thing. Right, I think we are pretty much there, I think. Mm, nice. I'm happy with this consistency. 
consistency is pretty good. Yeah, and we're good to go. So, nice. just for the end and a nice little fresh bite. After that, then we have three different toppings. So we have the apple popping candy, caramelized white chocolate and coconut, some walnut praline as well. What type of toppings would you like, Adam? What kind of topping do you like? Uh, I would probably maybe go with a mix of two, so possibly apple popping candy and walnut probably. Yeah, two different styles. There we go, madam. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. No problem at all.